In the previous section, we have defined eigenvalues and eigenvectors as somehow the constants of a linear transformation. And we have leveraged the determinant as a tool to compute those elements. Now we want to use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to express the transformation matrix in the simplest form. So we want to find a basis for our endomorphism such that the transformation matrix can be written in the simplest form. But what we mean by a matrix that can be considered simple? When a matrix is simple? Well, a matrix can be said to be simple when it is easy to multiply, invert, transpose, apply to vectors, and all the other properties that we have previously defined. The simplest matrix that can, can come in mind is the diagonal matrix. It's very, very easy to use and to compute. If we cannot uh, use a, a diagonal matrix, we can refer at least to the triangular matrices the upper triangular or the left triangle, the lower triangle, excuse me. For example, the diagonal matrix is very simple to multiply between a vector. In fact, the multiplication between the diagonal matrix and a vector is simply the scaling of the vector itself. The first technique that can be used to decompose, to simplify the matrices, is the Cholesky decomposition. And to apply this technique, we need to, use, uh, to take a matrix A that is symmetric and positive definite. If these two conditions holds, then the matrix can be expressed as the multiplication between two triangular matrix, the L triangular matrix times the transpose of L. The L matrix is said to be a Cholesky factor of A and it's a, a, a lower triangular matrix. We will not prove in this video that, but uh, we will say it, that the uh, L is, exist, always exist if the uh, matrix is symmetric and positive definite, and also L, the Cholesky factor, is unique. These two properties can be proved using uh, induction. To compute the Cholesky, uh, the compu the, uh, to see how we compute the Cholesky decomposition, let's use uh, an uh, A matrix as a 3 by 3 matrix. Here, thanks to the uh, previous slide, we can write the A as a multiplication between a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. Apply the multiplication between these two matrices, we get these elements. Now we can say that the, each of the element in the A matrix is equal to these elements. So let's start by one. We can see, uh, easily compute the L11 term. Then we can compute the uh, L21 term, which is simple, the element of a matrix divided by what we have computed in the first step. And we can move on in this rec recursive computation. But notice that the diagonal elements are, the, uh, their computation is different from the others. In fact, on the diagonal we have the element, the generic element on the diagonal is the thing of this computation, the square root of the AJJ, which is the element on the uh, diagonal for the original matrix minus 
this uh, sum. Elsewhere, we get this formula. So, in a re recursive way, we can find all of those elements that define the Cholesky factor of A. Why Cholesky decomposition is so important? Because uh, Cholesky decomposition allows us to compute determinants very, very efficiently. Several um, libraries in Python, R, and other programming languages use Cholesky decomposition to compute very efficient determinants very efficiently. In fact, determinant of A can be written as the determinant of the multiplication between these two matrices. But remember the determinant property in which the determinant of a multiplication is the multiplication between the determinants. And since the determinant of the transpose is equal to the determinant of the original matrix, here we get that the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of L to the power of 2. But also remember that the L is a triangular matrix, a lower triangular matrix. So its determinant is equal to the product, here there's an error, that's not to the trace, excuse me. That's the product of the, the, uh, the elements on the diagonal. Now let's move on and uh, uh, we've seen that the Cholesky decomposition uh, taken a um, square matrix allow us to transform this matrix in a set of two triangular matrices. But we would like, if possible, to transform the square matrix in a diagonal matrix. To do so, we need to remember what a basis change is. In when uh, the, uh, we talked about the basis change in the course number one in linear algebra, we considered uh, two generic vector spaces, V and W, and a linear mapping that goes from V to W. We've also defined two bases per vector space. On uh, the B and C bases, we have defined a transformation matrix. So the transformation matrix defines uh, how to go from V to W using these two bases. We have then identified another transformation matrix that corresponds to using these two bases. We, will, we would like to define, uh, to find how to go from this transformation matrix to this one. And we have expressed this basis change using this formula. So from here, we need to go here, taking this path. So we go, we start from B tilde, we go to, we apply S, go to B, then we apply our transformation matrix, and then we go back to C tilde using t to the inverse of T. This is equal to this transformation matrix, A tilde. That's a um, common basis change. Also remember that the transform we define a, a linear mapping and a transformation matrix for a generic uh, V and W vector spaces. So the A matrix and the A tilde matrix can have dimensions M times N. When this uh, formula holds, the two matrices are said to be equivalent. But uh, if uh, the two matrices that we, here we've called S and T are the same, then the A tilde and A are said to be similar 
matrices. So when we are able to describe the linear mapping using similar matrices, we just need to remember one matrix, the S matrix, for the basis change. In fact, given A, the matrix A, we just need to remember S and we can easily compute A tilde. Also remember that S um, to be uh, similar matrices, A and A tilde must be square matrices. In fact, here is uh, the dimension, M times N. So we want to do more and use the basis change to describe the linear mapping using a diagonal matrix. So now we want to say and we want to find a way to describe this matrix with a diagonal matrix and say that D and A are similar matrices. So let's take P, a generic matrix, in which uh, it's uh, composed by n vectors, P1, Pn. Then we can uh, rewrite this formula in this way. The multiplication between P and D is equal to the multiplication between the matrices A and P. Since D is a diagonal matrix, we already know how to compute this multiplication. Here we can keep the expression as generic as possible. So, since these two matrices must be equal, it means that every element must, must be equal. In this way, uh, here we are working with columns, so every column must be equal. The left column must be equal to the right column here. So, what we get here is the typical formula that describes eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The column of P must be eigenvectors of A, and uh, the eigenvalues of A determine the diagonal matrices. Using this uh, technique, A can be diagonalized and if A can be di diagonalized, we are able to find n eigenvalues. This technique, in which from a generic squared matrix, we get that as n eigenvalues. We get a diagonal matrix is said to be eigen decomposition. To uh, apply eigen decomposition, we need to find a set of n eigenvectors that form a basis. In this as a picture, we can see how the eigen decomposition works. The A uh, transformation goes, takes elements. In this space, the, in this case is a 2D plane, to this view of the 2D plane. The basis is still the same. Now, this transformation can be expressed using the long path. So we apply uh, the inverse of P, D, here we go, and then P again. So the inverse of P allow us to go from the standard basis to the eigen basis. D does just a scaling of the elements, of the vectors, and then from this space we uh, expressed using the eigenbasis as coordinate system, we need to go back to the standard basis, 
to the canonical basis, and to do so, we apply pi p, the matrix p. So, being able to dia diagonalize A allow us to compute its determinant in a simple, simple way. In fact, the determinant of A could be written if we apply eigen decomposition in this way. So, let's take a look to the... Uh, this is a multiplication between matrices. So, the determinant of a multiplication is the multiplication of the determinant. The determinant of the inverse is the inverse of the determinant. So we get the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of the diagonal matrix. And the determinant of a diagonal matrix is the product of the elements in, the, in its diagonal. So here we can see that D does only scaling. In fact, the since the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of D, it means that the transformation in volumes that take place in uh, the inverse of P and P uh, are equally balanced. So what A changes in volumes is the same as D changes in volumes. D does only scaling, in fact. We have seen uh, in this section that we can decompose a square matrix in two ways. The simplest is the Cholesky decomposition that can be done with symmetric and positive definite uh, matrices. And the, the second approach is the Eigen decomposition technique, in which if we, can, we are able to find an Eigen vectors basis, we are able to decompose a squared matrix into a diagonal matrix. In the next section, we will introduce a more generic approach that will allow us to decompose every matrix, even if it's not squared.